This is uh, Morten from English TV here. It's third and last day for us here at IGAS in Tokyo. Once again, we are here at the Horizon booth and going to see actually one of the first inline production that we are seeing here during the show. And I'm talking to Naresh. Naresh, good Pleasure to see to you. Too. Good to Pleasure see you. To yeah. you. Yeah. Naresh, um, we are here with an inline setup. Exactly. And yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a production setup for creating books, right? Yep. Tell us a little bit what we see here, right? So, what we have here is it's a completely printer inline system connected to, currently we are connected with the Ricoh printer, but it can actually connect with uh, Canon, Konica Minolta, or any other printers. Just a question, so when you connect the printer to a setup like this, does it require special software connecting them, or is it mainly driven by the, the output of the devices, or how, is it, how does it actually connect? So we, we do not need any special software. What we, are have, what we have here is a SBM connected directly to the, to the printer here, which is taking in the sheets directly from the printer, buffering it, uh, and then feeding in towards the slitter, yeah. smart slitter connected. And uh, uh, I think you told me before that when you have uh, 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 this um, uh, buffering here, basically you, you print on as large format as you can on this, and this is an SI3 uh, yes. printer. And then you buffer the, the, all the sheets for the book here, and exactly. that could be like two up or four up, depending on, on the size of the, exactly. of the book, right? Yeah. So that is to make sure that you have the, all the pages of the content, right? Exactly. So currently we're getting A3 size uh, paper, and then later on we will see in the system that we're having A5 size, two up, two, two up and we're making two book blocks. Okay, so that is it. And then, okay, we started actually a little bit because you have a colleague that is actually cleaning the machine. And that is, that is actually what I like to see because does that mean that is there a lot of maintenance when you work with a machine like this or is it more like daily cleaning that he's doing now or? Well, currently we were just cleaning the rollers because it was, there was a, a bit of ink on the paper and the finished products, that's what. It, you don't have to do it every day, but it's good to have, yeah. you know, well, if, the, if the ink is on the rollers, then it's better to clean it. Of course, like always, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, that just means that when the printer has a little bit left over of the ink exactly. because it's not 100% dry, then he was just uh, cleaning it, basically, right? But it has nothing to do with the horizon. It's basically based on what printer you put on it, right? Yeah. There we go. Fantastic. So, um, the SM, as I always find it interesting how you figure out to do these names on the machines. Well, it's self-explanatory. SMSL100 Smart Slater. Ah, so, it, so there is a, there is a smartness to it. Not exactly. Just, not just the smart factory, but also smart names, right? Okay. So what does this do? So as you see, uh, directly connected to S SBM100 with a sheet buffering module, the paper is fed in into the smart slater, and the smart slater is slitting it in in between, and then. The guillotine knife are cutting it at three three sides at the top, at the middle, and in the at the very bottom. And we're getting a five size two up book blocks. So here we came from the A3 sheets into this one, and then it cuts it into almost end finished product. Exactly. And then of course you because you want to have a bleed, so you you of course don't cut to format, but you cut to the bleed format basically. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. And and this, uh, I mean. Of course, everything needs to be aligned with the machine when it comes to speed and processing. How, how, how fast are these machines? I mean, what can they do? Currently, we're running at 50% speed because okay. we're, not, we're not running 100% and currently we're getting 150 books per hour. Okay. Ah, and that's about 50%? Pretty, about 50%. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and of course, it depends on number of sheets and, and also a little bit about formats because it depends on how many you can have up on the sheet, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, what we're doing here is we're slitting it and we're cutting it three times. The more job you do for the, for the slitter, the less speed it will be. Yeah. So it depends on what kind of job the customer is doing. Yeah. When you run at a lower speed here on a trade show, I understand of course that you don't want to waste too much paper exactly. showing, but is, it, is there any restrictions? Because I mean, in a moment we will also see a robot arm. Is there any restrictions in, in the speed compared to the entire lineup? Or is it more like a decision you make as an operator? I mean, you don't have to worry about speed and everything, but if you're producing, for example, let's say 200 books per hour, then we'll recommend uh, running it at a middle average speed rather than running it at a max speed. Of course, okay, great. So after this leader, what is this? This is basically a book block maker. So we're getting a slated paper from Smart Slater and then putting up two, two up book blocks at a time and then fitting it straight to the robot. Okay, 
One thing that is uh, relatively interesting, I mean, uh, maybe even a necessity on this uh, technology here, is basically that because on the other side here, we can see another Ricoh machine that is used to print the covers. So basically what I, was, what I learned just a moment ago is that now we have a book block. Now this actually tells this machine to print a cover. The covers are actually printed from the software, the workflow, the print sapiens at the very top it's giving JDF file to Rico printer and then we're also getting uh, a JDF files to Horizon Icelink. And then the job is produced, the book blocks are printed, at the same time the covers are printed. Okay, so they're printed on the same time. I, okay, I was under impression that there might be some, because if there was like a faulty book block or if there was something else, then you would need to stop it. But, but exactly. that is, okay, you can do that still? Exactly. Okay, let's go just check the other side as yeah, well. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, great. So, an arrest, um, a setup like this, is that what you also typically see with printing companies, both in, the, in Japan and also in the, in the globally? Or is this like kind of a new way of working? Or The current system that we have here is a completely new system. It's okay. not, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's the exact, entirely the same system installed somewhere else in the world, okay. but what we're doing here is we're just collaborating with different print, printer makers yeah. and trying to put a perfect, uh, a total solution for the customers who are looking for, yeah. uh, you know, slow, I'm sorry, small lot jobs yeah. or uh, on-demand things yeah. like that. And it makes a lot of sense to have this automated because basically one operator can manage everything, right? Exactly. Yeah. We don't have to touch anywhere. There's yeah. no human interference, any, anything. Yeah. And again, we have a Rico printer here. Uh, it yeah. could be any printer. So this is... The purpose of this one is to print the covers and nothing but, right? Basically, that's it. We're printing covers, the color, it's a color diesel printer, so we're printing colorful papers. Is the other black and white or? Yeah, okay. that one is the black and white. Yeah, okay. Looks nice. Exactly. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then from uh, the printer now, you're instead of going into the uh, the, the gatherer and the, and the slitter, you basically go into a buffering module exactly. once again making sure that you have the, all the, the covers ready to be fed into the BQ500, Exactly, right? in order. Exactly. In order. Yeah. So that basically means that if you have, let's say, uh, 100 different books, this system can still manage 100 different sizes and types and everything like that? Yeah. That is nice. I mean, currently we're running for uh, A5 size, so we're yeah. running 313 by 226 size covers. It could be bigger than that or it could be smaller than that. What is the minimum and maximum on this setup here? For this one, I guess we can go up to 320 by 210 or something. Okay, so still like a pretty large book format. I'll basically. have to check on the manual for that, we, for we the just, exact figures. But just yeah. to let our audience check your website, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. that's way Please easier, that. right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Naresh, we are back at the other end where we just started before. So, we have the covers on the, on the, on the further way, and then we have the book blocks here. The robot arm. Yep. It's so, quite amazing to see all these robots, right? There we go. It's actually doing a very simple job, picking up a book block and fitting it inside the perfect binder. But and at the same time, the, the exactly. thickness before, right? We're measuring the thickness, we're reading the barcode on the book block, also we're reading the barcode on the uh, cover sheets over there, and we're matching it. Once it's okay, then the perfect binder makes the book block, I mean, prepares the book, and then directly passes to the, to the ST300 over there. When I see all this technology. I mean, I get I get really amazed about to see how it works, and also from some of the other vendors, it seems that robots and uh, and AGVs and all the all the things are really like really really hot right now. But I can also get a little bit afraid because I'm a, if I'm a printing company, I'm used to do all the things by hand. How difficult is it to get into all this? You mean the robot robots yeah, I mean, and everything? Yeah, a, a fully automated setup like this is that a hard learning curve, or it's actually pretty simple. I mean, I'm I'm myself. I'm not a you know technical person or anything else like that. But if you look at this robot here, we have a monitor which can, you can actually uh, prepare your own kind of job and make different steps for the robot to make it the way you want to move it. Okay. So it is not, so, the, so a, a printer that see this film and could be interested should not be worried about uh, the skill set that is exactly. required. Okay, and that is maybe a very important issue to, to actually add to exactly. it, right? Okay, so now there's a fault with it. How will it handle that? It will handle it. We will see. It, it, will, be, it. it will just be <laughs> funny, funny things, right? Funny bit, yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we have the glued book coming out here. Okay. There's a drying conveyor. Basically. So it's, 
Yeah, one by one, we're fitting in book blocks. This is EL300. It will basically lifting up the book block and passing it through uh, the conveyor to HT300, which and, is a three-side trimmer. And, and the elevator, is that for the sole purpose of getting in into the height? Same of the, height of yeah, the okay. HT300, yeah. yes. Okay, great. And um, of course, when you have uh, the same height, it is, uh, of course, it ensures that you have no problems with, with different levels. Exactly. When yeah. Okay, great. So just to make sure that we're running at the same height of the HT300 in-feed yeah. section. And talking about the HT300, that is like the three-side knife, right? Yep, a one-knife, three-side trimmer. Yep, one-knife, three-side, so it turns it when exactly. it's... Exactly. Uh, okay. Let's see what we have here. And you easily see with all the colors, basically, whether it's operating or if there's a, in standby mode or is it an error, right? Currently we have green, so we are good to go. And then moments ago it was red, that means there was an error. So it's pretty, pretty easy to uh, understand what's the, what, what kind of situation is the machine. And in. where it is also, because exactly. it's, I mean, if you look at this, I mean, what is it like, you know, 10, 15 meters long in total. So it's nice to see where, where things are, are stopping, right? Exactly. So uh, you say um, one knife, three sides, so, and you turn it, does that give you any I would say difficulties from a quality perspective, or is that totally also fine when it comes to the, to the trimming of the sides? You can look at the previous products here, and I don't think we have any issues with the quality here. That looks really nice, right? Oh, that's good. So what are you, are you a printer or a binder? <laughs> or you're a, a robo robot assistant? <laughs> I guess I'm an operator right now. An operator, <laughs> okay. So, um, I mean, this is pretty cool, man. Well, you can have some of this for the Omiyage to take back home. Yeah, I would like to. From Japan. So, uh, yeah, made in Japan, right? Uh, one thing I want to say is that the, the basic idea for the entire system is, uh, you know, the lack of skilled workers and people who want to reduce the, the cost of the industry, then this is the system which can do a lot of uh, manual job, which is completely making it auto automated work. Mm. Um, I'm just also curious, uh, is this only for bigger companies to invest in or, I mean, is there, is it, I mean, because you know there's mom and pop shops and they're like huge printing companies. So where, where does this start? Well, you don't have to be, you know, a big, huge company to buy the system. Basically, uh, if you're looking into printing, printing on demand or if you're working with the small lot for example, 500 to 1,000 books per day, then this is the system for you. Fantastic, so now you just have to sell more books, right? Exactly. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Pleasure, pleasure.